Welcome, Jermaine Jackson. <laughs> Jermaine, the book's entitled You Are Not Alone, appropriate after the song, Through a Brother's Eyes. What made you want to write it? I felt it was time to set the record straight, and, um... Well, what we did, we did a lot of research on facts, and we, we wanted to sort of document a, a, a truth about our lives as children growing up, becoming the Jackson Five, during the Jackson Five period, up until the Jacksons and the solo careers and, and Michael's extraordinary career as well. What are the biggest errors that people make in judging Michael Jackson? Just painting him out to be this person that he's not. And there are so many things in the book. Uh, the false accusations of child molestation and, and calling him names. Uh, he's my brother. He's a wonderful father, a wonderful son. And, and um, he doesn't deserve this. We felt that this would give a true documentation of what his life was all about. I think one of the things that puzzled people most of all, you knew him, we only knew what we saw, was the way in which he appeared to want to change himself. We saw him appear to become less and less happy with himself, to want to change his appearance. That presumably was true. He suffered from vitiligo, which changed the colour of his skin. Um, but his music, his message, his heart has always been the same, and that's most important. I think the media has exploited and picked on things that weren't important. We should look at the person of a human being and but not the things But this is a person who, who died very young, tragically. So it's not surprising in a way that people think the saddest thing about Michael Jackson is that we lost him so early we shouldn't have done. It appears to have been caused as a result of inner turmoil. No, when you read the book and you... All the questions that you've had in your minds and the public, when you read the book, you'll understand. Um, we know Michael was, uh, had problems with sleeping. We knew Michael had uh, excruciating pain, which was Demerol. But that's not what killed my brother. And there are questions in our mind as a family, as well as my mother and father and the public as well. What happened um, just during his last days of having just unheard of symptoms, like uh, half his body being hot and half being ice cold and him not knowing right from left and him being very forgetful. And, so what and do you it, think happened? They poisoned the him. It was propofol. By who? By, by I, I guess he trusted doctors and Dr. Murray was there to take care of him and he wasn't an anesthesiologist, he was a cardiologist and to put this horrible drug in my brother and not to have had the proper mm -hmm medical um, um, instruments to monitor him. The trial begins today. Do you think, bearing in mind all the publicity that's been surrounding it, that the, the doctor will get a fair trial? Will that be difficult? Whether he gets a fair trial or, or not, it's not going to bring my brother back. And we, as a family, we, we hurt. Our loss is no different from any other family's But this family's will presume loss. A, it's pretty intense. Will it give you closure, do you think, if this is sorted never, out? Never, never give us closure, because Michael didn't deserve to die. And, and um, what I've done in the book, I've given you eyes and ears into the rehearsals of the final days, because what you saw with This Is It was all edited, but there, there were terrible days. And, and not to point the finger, but just to let the reader read this and examine. We started from childhood, when I, I used to go to Michael's classroom and I would position myself in the hallway where the teacher couldn't see me, but I could kind of wave at him and check on him. But this was way back in elementary school. So, so we started there. Even at that early age, you could see that this was a ferocious and precocious talent then, way back then. You knew there was something big. Yeah, well, well, we were always rehearsing as kids and my father training us and really preparing us. It was a very hard child, us. brought up as Jehovah's Witnesses, not celebrating birthdays, not celebrating Christmases. Do you think that really sort of tightly controlled childhood was, was responsible for a kind of rebellion later on? No, no. What it was is we grew up as Jehovah's Witnesses and, and my mother and him didn't want to... Well, 
it was against the beliefs to have Christmas and celebrate holidays and everything. So Michael and I would find, find ourselves just looking out the windows and the snow's falling and we're singing Christmas carols and we're looking at the neighbors' homes and they're all lit up and, and all the fun and the joy. When Michael became, in the later years of his life, when he had purchased Neverland, the whole place was, was lit up like Christmas and, and he had a Christmas tree in the house every day. What do you want? Michael's legacy to be? I want people to know, and what I've written in this book, that besides being a great entertainer, he's a wonderful father, he's a human being, and he, all the names that he was called and all the things they put him through, he didn't deserve this, and, and... Um, Is that because we all feel responsible for our siblings, particularly when, when we're older? Is there a, a degree of guilt, as his, his older brother, that you, you feel you could have done more? Do you wish you'd done more? Could you have done more? No, because I've been watching him from our, from the hallway of our elementary school, so I've always watched over him and had was his Was there back. a moment when you thought things were going wrong? There was a lot of moments when I thought things were going wrong, but see, we're a family, and the most important thing for us and for my parents was to instill morals and principles in us. Respect yourself, respect other people, respect the elders. They were laying the foundation for us, so no matter how far we went in our careers with success, it was important to never look at this as the most greatest thing. It's just an illusion. What's most important is what kind of person you are. Michael never lost that, so for them to call him all these horrible names, Wacko Jack, when this, I knew what he was. I knew how we were raised, and these things hurt him as well. That's why he, he was most concerned about. He brought some he of them on upon himself, about... Shermaine. I mean, he, he played yeah. the press. Yeah, but, but the press played him more. They played him more because it was a, he was a target to sell magazines, to create ratings, to do all sorts of things. At the end of the day, he was a father. He loved his children. His children was always with him. What will you miss most about your brother? His smile. Beautiful smile and just beautiful person. He, it's, um, it's hard. It's very hard. It's very good of you to come and talk. Thanks so much for writing the book. Bless your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, Jermaine Jackson. <laughs> That's almost it for today, but now...